Creo Parametric 4.0, Lesson 6, Part 2. The second component is the clamp ball. And we'll start off by going in and selecting our working directory. Now, if you don't do this, you will not have access to some of the files you need for the, the for the uh, model that we're going to do. So I think I'm going to leave it alone like this and just start a new project. This is the ball, the clamp ball. I'm doing this on purpose so that we see what happens when things aren't available. And we're going to go in and do our typical turning on our datum tags. And we'll go into our options and our configuration and we're going to import our configuration. Now, because we're not in the proper directory, we're not seeing our configuration. So I would have to go over to where I stored it, which is our Creo Parametric, Creo Textbook.pro. That's the name of the config file that we created previously. Open, OK. And I'll click No. Now, what happened is it went back and it put that configuration on, which did not show my datum tags. Now next I want to make sure I turn on my tree filters here and go into annotations and suppressed. I'm going to turn everything on. I always do. And the next thing is I want to set up my material. Now traditionally you go into your prepare, file prepare, model properties, and you can click on the material here. We've done this previously. But with 4.0, we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to select the ball part from the model tree, right mouse button, and we're going to edit materials. And we're going to go directly into that dialog, the materials dialog. And I'm going to go into legacy materials. And I'm going to select nylon as per the book. And then I'm going to go back over and pick on standard materials. This is new for 4.0. And I'm going to pick on, uh, let's see, plastics. And um, I'm going to add a couple of plastics to this. I'm not saying you'd necessarily make them with this, but I'm going to add them to the list so you can see what the capability is. So I added a few. And click on OK. And now, because I have my materials shown here, checked in the model tree, I can open this up and you'll see that these are the materials that are available. If I clicked on this right mouse button, I could assign this to it. I don't want to do that. I want to keep it at nylon. If I wanted to see that, I could edit the definition of it and it would show me my dialog. So that's uh, new for 4.0. All right. So we're going to create this shape here. And what we want to do is utilize the sketch that we created in the foot for the hole, for the internal cutout. So I'm going to go to my Model tab and click on Revolve. We're going to use our right datum plane and click on Sketch View. You can see the axis Z going down here. Now. I'm going to hold down my shift key and my middle mouse button, just move this over a little bit. And I want to bring in my palette. I'm going to click on it. And because I created this ball part in the same directory, it's going to show up. Yours may not show up. So what you'd want to do here is make sure you're in your proper directory. I want to be in this directory here. And now when I go and I click on my palette, I'm going to have the sections I created previously. And one of them is the ball end. I'm going to double click on it, and I'm going to put it anywhere up in here. With my right mouse button, I'm going to move it to the here, and so it drags from that point. And with my left mouse button, I'm going to come over, and I'm going to connect it there. I'm not going to worry about the distance down here. Close and check. Oh, I made a mistake. I really. I can I can work from here, but I would really like to show it to you that the book uh, the way the book describes on how to do it. So I'm going to click here, right mouse button, move it, 
move this over to here. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to change the scale here to 2. And check. Close. And I'm going to take this largest dimension and turn it into 0.75. When I do that, it'll make the sketch the appropriate size. Now, what I want to do is I want to make sure that this can here is connected to the bottom. That's very important. I want this to go to the very bottom. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to find a coincident constraint and I'm going to click on the end point and on the reference. And it's going to say, well, we got to get rid of something. I want to get rid of the point 4. So now I'm fairly close to the dimension size. I have one and a half here. I have 0.875 here. And this one is correct, 0.75. Let's see. Yes, 0.75 is correct. All right. Now, if I complete this right now, it's going to say I want to turn this into a surface because I didn't enclose it. What does that mean? Well, I can finish this, but if you notice up here, it says revolve as a surface. Okay, it looks okay, but see how it's just a thin wall? You got an inside and an outside. So it's not what we want, but it's the only thing it'll give it give to us based on the options that we selected. And the way we did, I should say really, the way we sketched. If I was to turn it into a solid, the only thing that it would allow is it to turn into a thin solid. In other words, have a thin, consistent wall. Instead, I'm going to go back into my sketch, and I'm going to enclose it so it's a closed section. That's interesting. I keep doing that. I wonder if it's my selection technique yet. Line. I'm going to pick on the end here, and I'm going to go to here. I'm going to go to here, and then middle mouse button twice. Now it's a closed section. Right mouse button check. And I don't want it to be thin, so i got to be careful to shut that off because I had it thin before. And there's my first feature. Like so. I'm going to rotate this around because I'm going to work on this top surface here. So I'm going to click on Hole. And I'm going to open up my placement so you see what's happening. I come over here and I select an axis, and it collects right here. If I hold down the control key and select here, that's my starting surface. Now, I want to create a standard hole. I want it to be a half an inch. I want it to have a chamfer. And I think I want it to go 0.5. And when I go to my Shape tab here, I want to make sure my thread is only going to go 0.375. And I can't remember what the um, size here is for the chamfer, but I'll just put that in. And it's 0.5 something, I can't remember. And it includes the thread surface. And if I go over and I click on my hidden line, uh, no hidden line, and I'm going to check. You'll see it puts a magenta surface in there. This represents the thread. That's what that is. Double click, click on it. So we want to do one more thing while we're here. We'll see the note here that's available. If I double click on that note, it's a very long convoluted series of symbols and words. And some of the things I want for, I'm going to look up here and I'm going to see, it says dash one hole. So I'm going to remove where it says pattern and hole, like so. Now the other thing is it says class, series, thread, and then tap. It says standard hole type. I'm going to remove that. And I'm just going to click OK and see what it looks like. So 
I can keep working on this until it gets to be what I want. So the thread depth, I'm going to put on a new line. And I'm going to remove this portion right here. And out in front of here, I'm going to insert a diameter symbol. And the depth, I will hit enter for that. OK. So you can see I built my note. And by the way, when I get to the drawing, I can alter this note even more. So I don't have to do everything here. But just to give you an example, and you can see I accidentally hit my enter before I wanted it to be here. It should have been in front of the, the symbol. So I'm going to turn that off because I really don't want to see notes on my model usually. All right. So the next thing is I want to put in some chamfer, a chamfer and a round. But I'll do it a little bit differently. I want to click on the surface, hold down my control key, and click on another surface. And for some reason, the option in the context uh, sensitive menu does not give me the option I want. I'm just going to go up and click on round and it's going to put a round surface to surface in there. And I'm going to do the same thing, pick this area here and the top. And this time, I'm going to go up and I'm going to select chamfer. Oh, I did something wrong. Try it again. Surface and surface. I think I picked something besides the surface. Chamfer, and there's my chamfer. Control D. And we have our, you can see the drill tip on the bottom. You're not going to see the threads because it's a cosmetic thread, but it was automatically generated. Now, if I want to click on the model, I'm going to put it back in triometric. I get a lot of dimensions, depending on what I select. You can see them here. If I click on those, I can change those dimensions. I'm going to turn it. So I'm going to go and click on my revolve and select dimensions. Edit dimensions. And when I do, select this, I can go up here and I can take a look at some of the choices I have to change the format. Dual dimensions, the dimension format into fraction. I can add information to my text here. Um, I'll just type in something so you see it. And you can see it show it up on the dimension itself up here. So I can go in and I can change those dimension properties at that point. So this is my second component. Now there's one more revolved component, and that's the swivel. 